Hi YouTube, I'm Maimon, and welcome back to one of my mechanic slash auto repair videos. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to replace the rotor and the brake pad. Uh, this, the operation in this video is specifically on the, Honda, the 2003 Honda Accord, but for most cars, uh, the rotor and brake pad is pretty much the same. Uh, so, let's get to it. The first step, always, is taking off the tire. And as you can see, we've already done that, and we've already skipped over it for sake of time. Also, don't forget to jack up the car. You don't want to forget that. Anyway, getting to the actual brake, uh, on the rotor, there are these two screws here. That There's a common problem that if the brake hasn't been worked on in a while, that these two screws will get welded in due to rust or heat. And I did a video on how to uh, take them out even if they were completely stripped. So I advise you to check that out if that problem has occurred to you. Anyway, we've already loosened it using this and uh, using the manual impact driver. Uh, so we're good. So now we can just loosen it using a screwdriver. So before we start, I wanna explain uh, why we're actually doing this. So my brother, uh, Miro, he actually complained to my dad that the brakes made like a, a rubbing sound or uh, some kind of screech. I heard a screech. Uh, but anyway, there could be many reasons why this happens. Uh, for example, there's something wrong with the caliper pin. Uh, this right here could have warped or it has a groove or the brake pad may have worn out. And uh, something to advise you on if the, if the brake makes a noise, even if it's working, you probably want to get that checked out immediately. Like, don't risk the lives of yourself and others, please. Alright, so let's get to it. So now we've taken these two screws off. We can see that this, um, the rotor doesn't look too bad, uh, except for some rust. And the caliper doesn't look too bad either. But we should uh, take it off just to see. And to do that, to make it easier, we should just uh, turn this uh, to the side. And you can use it, you can do it using the steering wheel, or if you are a bit stronger, you can just turn it. See? This job, it should only take you under an hour, even for both sides. Uh, however, the mechanic charges you a lot for this, uh, even, but, you know, it's under an hour. We can use uh, any, many tools to uh, unscrew the caliper bolt. Uh, whatever you have in your garage, for example, we can use a regular wrench uh, right here. We could use a ratcheting wrench. Uh, we can use a socket wrench. This one's also ratcheting. Or, or we can use the power tool. Oh, this is gonna save you a lot of time. Now, what you want to do is you want to take the power tool or wrench, and you want to unscrew it. Uh, this might spin, so if it does, then you can use a uh, this is a plier to secure it. But uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem. All right, let's get to it. All right, now it's out. There are two of them, so you want to continue on um, right here power tool will save you a lot of time guys so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna pull this caliper out and if it's loose then you can just pull it out and uh, put it on, rest it on top uh, if it's a bit tight you can use uh, any leverage tools really like a screwdriver or I guess a screwdriver but it's a crowbar and then you can just uh, rent, like leverage it out. You wanna make sure you're holding onto the other thing too. You wanna hold onto this because it's attached to this. All right, and then you're gonna rest it on top. Right now, we're exposed to the brake pads, and what you want to do is you want to uh, pry them out. All right, so let's see what we, what's going on here. Ooh. 
Ooh, that's the problem. All right, look, it's just exposed to the uh, bare metal. Let's see on the other side. Hmm. Oh, this, this still looks good. All right, uh, my dad tells me that this problem should only occur if one or both of the pins is frozen. All right, so here's how we tell if it's frozen. If it doesn't push in and push out, then it's frozen. All right, let's look at this one. All uh, right, that one's frozen. That's how you tell if a pin is frozen. See, the way it works is that when you use the brakes, uh, it's supposed to, the piston's supposed to, uh, make the pads, uh, squeeze in, right? And that's what the, these pins help do. And if one of the pins is frozen, then it can't, uh, push outwards. And that, that's gonna make it get exposed to, like this. <laughs> All right, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the bracket so that we can both uh, lube the uh, pins and fix them and take the rotor out. But before that, let me show you how to uh, put the piston back in because you know, when you put the new pad, it's gonna be more thicker. So you wanna make sure that there's enough space. So basically, if you don't have enough tools, then you can just use a $5 clamp. And wait. then you wanna make sure, oops, make sure you got no space and a right place to pry it in and then you want to twist it in you want to put some pressure on it is pretty. Well, it looks like it's not going further. And now, we're going to uh, hang this up so that we can take out the rotor. Alright, so now, let's uh, do the procedure. So, to take off the bracket, the bolt is right here. You can use a wrench, uh, or this very long pry bar, or, if you're like me, you know power tools. So you want to make sure it's secure, and then you want to take it out. Then you want to take this out. Oh, there are two. Never mind. <laughs> there are two, okay? Okay. There are two. There's another one up here. Take out the bracket. And then finally the rotor. Oh, that's that's rusty. Alright, so my dad has already uh, loosened the pistons, but right now, yeah, we're, you know what it is. We're gonna take out the pistons with a satisfying pop. And then we're going to um, clean them using brake part cleaner. And then we're gonna grease them using uh, high temp ultra disc brake caliper lube. It looks pretty old actually. And then we're going to put it back in. Alright, so my dad has uh, cleaned and lubed the pins, as you can see, uh, when you push this down, it goes back up, and when you uh, pull this up, it goes back down, so that's good. So right now, we're going to replace the rotor and everything, but before you do that, you always want to make sure that you have the same exact parts. Um, see, these are matching. You know that, um, these new parts are matching with the old parts. Uh, this thing is to tell you which is the corresponding, it's the outside. Um, and now, we're going to replace it. We're also going to replace, where is it? Where's it? Oh, okay. We're going to, uh, replace the brackets that hold the, uh, pads. We're going to replace them with these. 
There is a good reason why we're replacing the rotor. If we look at uh, the rotor, the damage is bad. It's metal on metal. And, you know, we could always send this to a shop to uh, sand it down or, or mill it. You know, can't do it ourselves. Uh, this costs around $10. But my dad wanted to go with the safer option of replacing it entirely. Uh, you, I mean, you can't sand it if depending on the thickness. Just make sure. So there are three types of the rotors. Uh, there was the bronze, the gold, and the platinum. This is the platinum. The story is, uh, my dad went to his local advanced auto parts, and he tried. He wanted to get the gold. You know, the middle path is always the best. He didn't want to get the cheaper one. However, it's you know, it's a Sunday morning. They're out of the gold, so he went for the platinum. You know, so since you, you since you don't want the cheaper option, right? And here we have the platinum. It's uh, got the um, these vents here, just like the original, uh, to help it retain, uh, keep uh, better temperature. So the thing about advanced auto parts is that if you just buy it at the store by itself, then um, you don't get any discount. However, if you order it online and then you go pick it up at the store, then you get up to a 40% discount. We got 30% discount. Uh, and even further, if you get both the um, pads and the rotor, then you get uh, another uh, uh, rebate. And that's even better for you. Now bringing up the topic of these auto parts stores, um, depending on the part, Advanced Auto Parts uh, only has a limited warranty of two years uh, on these brake and pads. Um, and that's a limited warranty. That means it's only if it's defective, they'll replace it. However, with other stores like Advanced uh, no wait, AutoZone, I mean, <laughs> don't get it confused. AutoZone has a lifetime warranty. So, if, imagine you're a delivery driver, right? And you're driving around for a year, and you rake up 100,000 miles. And obviously, since it's wear and tear, you need to get the brake replaced, right? So, at the expense of having to install it yourself, you can take out the uh, rotor, and you can give it to them, and they'll give you a new one back. I mean, you still have to install it yourself. But it's still a good deal. That's a lifetime warranty. Even after 10 years, you could do it. Uh, although, I think that the maximum times you can do this is like three times. They don't want you to abuse the system, okay? So, uh, be uh, careful here. However, uh, my dad had to weigh the options between uh, convenience and price. Uh, usually, he would have gone with AutoZone. However, this time, because of the rebate and the discount, he went with Advanced Auto Park. You know, um, now that my story is over, um, sorry for uh, making my video a bit long, fun, and informative, uh, but there's always a fast forward button if you need to skip. I don't want to be sassy or anything. Uh, anyway, we're going to move on to putting back the rotor on. And this process is just reverse of what we did uh, all the way, all the steps leading up to this. So we're going to uh, line this up. The holes should be at the right place. Yeah, okay, that's good. Then we're gonna just put it back on. All right, and then you wanna, what? make sure you wanna have your screws. And then you wanna, oh God. Then you wanna screw it back in. It's kind of hard with gloves, but you know, this is a bit dirty. Wanna get your trusty screwdriver, you wanna screw it in. Next step is putting the caliper back in. It's actually pretty simple. You just need to uh, take a bolt. You want to put the bolt in and then uh, the caliper in at the same time and see if you can line it up. It should be like a guide. Um, yep, it's good. Then you want to screw it in. You want to secure it and then you want to take the other one. Alright, so we've tightened the uh, bolt back here, and now we're going to replace the uh, bracket here. Usually, uh, people don't replace this, but since we got it for free, might as well. Alright. Uh, 
uh, word of advice. Uh, if you're gonna do this, you should take out the, um, the you should take out this first before putting in the rotor because it's just gonna scratch it. I mean, it's gonna scratch it anyway, but you know, it's convenient. Anyway, it's pretty easy to do it. It just snaps in, and then you uh, push it, and it's done. All right, now we have to put in the brake pads, and that's pretty simple. All you need to do is put it at an angle and then slide it in. All right, should be simple. Now for the inside. Okay, can't see. I don't put it, I didn't put it at the right angle. Okay. Alright, maybe from the bottom. Maybe I didn't put it in right. Oh, oh never mind. It, it did it perfectly. Okay. So the brake pads are now in. <laughs> Alright, so now we're gonna put the caliper back on. So we're gonna wanna release the caliper from its traps. Make sure it doesn't get twisted. And then we're going to align it with its a corresponding piston and then we're going to want to uh, put the bolt back on this well as you can see the rotor the pad and the caliper are all back in and it's uh, getting dark so it's time to wrap up um, the reason I always do these uh, close to the evening is because it's too hot in the afternoon and I and I just went shopping with my mom so Anyway, we're going to do this on the other side, but one quick note to mention before we do that is when you're pushing the piston back in, you always want to make sure that you take off this cap so that the system, you know, doesn't buzz. Um, well, we did it, by the way. Just making sure. Alright, so that's a wrap. I'm Aiman, and thanks for watching. Please like, rate, comment, subscribe, and look at other videos on I and Aiman, especially the auto repair videos. And that video about uh, taking out these screws, too. You should see that, too. Um, mechanic I'm on, and uh, that cat, his name is Burton, out. Peace.